Hi everyone! Today we're going to be talking about how to find the least squares line, also known as the line of least squares or the regression line. To complete this problem, we'll find the slope and y-intercept of the line, plug them into the slope-intercept formula for the equation of the line, and then simplify to find the equation. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to find the least squares line, or the line of least squares, also called the line of regression, given this data set here for x and y. So the way that this data set is written, it tells us that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 0 0.8. It's basically a set of coordinate pairs, right? So if x is 2 and y is negative 1, then we have the coordinate pair 2, negative 1, 4, negative 0 0.2, 6, 0 0.2, etc. So we have all these points, right? And they're not perfectly along a straight line, we need to find the line that's more or less the average of all of these points. So in order to do this, when you're given a set of points like this, what you'll need is three formulas. The first formula you'll need is the formula for the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Remember that in this equation we have m and b. m is the slope of our line, and we've been given a special formula for m here. B is the y-intercept or the point at which our graph intercepts the y-axis b and b we've also been given a special formula for here so our first formula the equation of the line in slope intercept form and then two other formulas one to calculate m and one to calculate b when we use these formulas for m and b and we find them we'll plug them into the equation for the line in slope intercept form and solve for the equation of the line that way so normally when these formulas are given to you the formulas for m and b they look much more complicated than this this was the way that i always remembered them when uh, i first learned this concept and it's a more simplified version it's a less technical but more simplified version for the formulas for m and b so what i've written here are these sigma signs which are basically in indicate sums so for example here this first one this is the sum of every x point times every y point so what this tells us is that we're going to multiply x by y and then add all the values together so we'll multiply 0 by negative 0 0.8 and then we'll add that to 2 times negative 1 add that to 4 times negative 0 0.2 etc so we'll multiply each of these pairs together and then we'll add them all together this here this is the sum of all the x's added together, and this is the sum of all the y's added together, and when we get those two sums, then we'll multiply them together to get the product of the two sums. So you get the idea generally. Let's go ahead and calculate m, our value for m. So n, in this case, is the number of points that we have. So we can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 coordinate pairs, or 7 points that we've been given. So n will be 7. So we have 7. And then remember, again, we're taking the sum of all the x's and y's multiplied together. So we could write this out, but it would be 0 times negative 0 0.8 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 4 times negative 0 0.2, etc. When we add all those together, when we multiply each pair together, and then we take the sum of all of those products, we'll get negative 16.8. Then according to our formula, we're going to subtract what we get when we add all of the x values together. So 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 is 42. That's the sum of all the x's. And then here, the sum of all the y's is negative 0 0.8 plus negative 1 plus negative 0 0.2, etc. When we add all those together, we'll get negative 3.6. And then in our denominator here, we have again n, so we know that to be 7, times the sum of the squares of all of the x values. So what we're going to do is 0 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 6 squared, etc. And when we take all the squares of those and add them together, we'll get 364. And then according to our formula, we'll take the sum of all the x values. We already know that to be 42, right? You can see the sum of all the x values, which we know to be 42. We're doing that again. The sum of all the x values is 42. So now we're just taking 42 squared. So again, 42 squared will be 1764. 
when we do the arithmetic on that one, what we'll get is 33.6 divided by 784. And we'll go ahead and leave that in that form for now. When we look at B, right, when we solve for B, we're going to take the sum of all the y values. We already took that. It's right up here. And we know that it's negative 3.6. So we'll get negative 3.6 minus, now this formula, notice, includes m. And that's m that we solved for in the last step. So m we know to be 33.6 divided by 784. It's especially important that you don't round this value because you're going to have to use it in the second formula. And if you round it here and then put it in this formula for B, then you're going to get a rounded answer for B that won't be accurate. So make sure to keep this in exactly the form that you get it. So we have minus M and then we're multiplying that by the sum of all the X's. And we already calculated that here and here, and we know that it's 42, 42 here. So We'll go ahead and plug in 42 there. And then that's all divided by the number of points that we have, and we already know that that's 7. So when we do the arithmetic on this one, we get a value for B of negative 5.4 over 7. So we can leave them in this form, and we can go ahead and plug them into our slope-intercept form for the equation of the line and get 33.6 divided by 784 times x minus 5.4 over 7. You can leave the equation in this form. The only thing I would, I would suggest is if you're doing your homework problems or even if you're taking a test, go ahead and additionally write out the decimals, you know, if you want to include an or like this, but calculate the decimals on your calculator and write them out because sometimes your book will list it with the decimals written out and maybe your professor wants it with the decimals. I like to just give both options so that <laughs> they can't refuse me credit. So in that case, you'll get approximately 0 0.0429x minus point, or I should say 0 0.7714. These two are equal to one another. It's just one with fractions and one uh, written out as decimals. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.